Last week here on Sport Fishing, we were fishing aboard the Eclipse with Captain Mark and his crew. We had pretty good Dorado fishing, yellowtail, and some nice bluefin tuna. Well, this week on Sport Fishing, we're back aboard the Eclipse, fishing down in Mexican waters, looking for some monster-sized bluefin tuna. So stay tuned for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah, this is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Today is day two, or part two, of our adventure aboard the Eclipse. It's still the same day, and uh, fishing is pretty awesome. We're on a day and a half trip, and we are just whacking the tuna. Pretty good bite. I got another fish going here. If I would have landed every fish this morning that I hooked, I'd have my limit, but I got sawed off, I got cut off, and fish swallow my hooks and bite through my line. So I still got a few fish to go. So hopefully this will get me closer to my limit. So moved up to heavier gear, fishing a larger reel, 50 pound test line, a little bit heavier rod, and just pulling on the fish. Every time he gives me some line, I'm just gonna lower my rod chip and lift up. When you fish with this heavier gear, you can force these fish a little bit. You just have to be careful. You don't wanna pull the hook out. So. Now he found out he's hooked. He's not real happy. <laughs> you want to I got it. Right. Getting a little closer to my limit. Another bluefin here. Hooked him perfectly right in the corner of the jaw. Nice tuna. This is what we're doing on the clip today. Looking for bluefin tuna, yellowtail, dorado. Maybe we'll see an albacore or yellowfin. Who knows? Yeah, we never. Hopefully, we don't get skipjack. But this is a nice bluefin. We're doing pretty good here. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action here, board the clips, and go to the tackle box and give you a good look at the gear we're using for today's trip. Woo! Today in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing today. Fishing offshore, looking for tuna, We've got lots of bluefin in the water. And when you're fishing for bluefin, you have to pay attention to the tackle you're using. These are mean fish. You have to have a good tackle all the time. Make sure the line on your reel is fresh. And if you're using fluorocarbon, you know how to tie those knots, the combined knots together. Very important. If you're going to you know, you want to practice tying those knots at home. And if they break on you, you want them to break at home where you practice tying. You don't want to be doing that on the boat when all the action's going on. Now, as far as baits and hooks and all that, when you're using live bait for bluefin tuna, you need to have a selection of hooks. I would have something maybe as small as a size one or size two, if all you have are small anchovies for bait. But you also want to have some four O's and six O's just in case you get those bigger, 
mackerel or big sardines. You start getting those bigger tuna, you get fish over 40 pounds, 50 pounds, and lots of times for the end of the year, we'll get those 60, 80 pounders. A 6 cell hook isn't gonna be that big. If you don't have one with you, you're gonna wish you had one. Those bigger tuna have no problem eating a big sardine, big mackerel, and you have to have hooks to pin those on. If you try putting up like a size one hook on a big mackerel, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to drive that hook into the fish. So you have to carry you know, different size hooks with you at all times. And then another thing I like to use is the metal jig. You might wanna slide up to the bow of the boat as the boat drifts, the bow is a great place because all the bait that the crew's chumming is going to go from the back of the boat, slide underneath the boat into the bow. Lots of times we see lots of tuna jumping up there. Great place to throw a jig, something like this, magic metal jig. And you don't have to worry if you catch a small bluefin or a large bluefin. These all have welded rings. So you might think you're going to get a 20 pound bluefin, but you hook an 80 or 100 pounder. No worry, that split ring here, there is no split ring on these lures. These are all welded rings, it's not going to pop open on you. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Hey Mark, is this your son? It is. Talk about it. It's his 10 year, uh, 10 year old birthday tomorrow. Making me an old man. We got a uh, one of the new Abbott Raptor reels here. He's caught a lot of fish on this reel. He's done really well for us. Go walk up to the bow. Walk as you wind. Walk as you wind. Hold on to your rod. That thing's bigger than you are. <laughs> That's a bluefin right here. Yeah. Ten years old tomorrow. It's ten years old. I think it weighs more than he does. I think it does too. I think he's got to go swimming. <laughs> hey, good job. Hey, you guys think you can't come out here and catch bluefin? Ten years old, catching 45-pound bluefin. Come on out and get some. I'd be lying to you and say I'm not a proud dad right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get some more. The body of a yellowtail is a slender with a pointed snout and a wide tail. The most striking feature is a bright yellow, deeply forked tail. California yellowtail can be found from Chile in the south and up to central California. The largest recorded California yellowtail weighed 80 pounds and was 5 feet long. Yellowtail primarily eat anchovies, squid, sardines, and other small bait fish. Okay, kids, don't do this at home. I'm almost got a limit. I only need uh, one, yeah, probably one more. So I dropped down to 20 pounds to make it more challenging. This is my calico bass run. And you should never do this on a sport boat. Big disclaimer.
Stop whining. Put it, just put it right in the box. We're going to take a little break from the action here aboard the Cliffs and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of these delicious fish we're catching today. <laughs> this week in the galley, we're in Anaheim, California at Eat Street. And standing next to me is Kate Averill. She's a chef and owner here, and she does cooking lessons and classes. And today she's been kind enough to invite us down to show us how to cook up a fish dish. Thanks for having us. Oh, well, thank you. And what do you have in store for us? Well, tonight? you brought in your beautiful yellowtail. We're going to make a sushi that's a tartare, makes a great appetizer all day long. These are happen to be homemade pita chips, but you can definitely get store bought ones. Mm -hmm. Brush on a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and you're going to broil them in the oven just until, until they're golden. It's very fast. So okay. don't leave and leave in the room. It's going to be about a minute. All right, cool. Then you want to make sure your fish is very cold. The colder it is, the easier it's going to slice. And you want to dice it, and you want all your pieces to look similar. So this is about an eighth inch. Then you're going to go an eighth inch the other way. It's a very easy dish if all your mise en place is together. Mise en place is your French term for everything in its place. So before you even get started, you're going to have your mise en place together, which is two tablespoons of basil, uh, a whole bunch of green onions, scallions, two tablespoons cilantro, a tablespoon of sesame oil, a tablespoon of soy sauce, a tablespoon of fresh ginger. You're going to get, this is not the spice that your mom put in the apple pie or the pumpkin pie. You're going to use fresh ginger, peeled and then minced up like this, a tablespoon of chili paste, tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons olive oil, and then a tablespoon, a teaspoon, sorry, of pepper, all into the bowl. Once your fish is all cut into eight inch dice, you put it all in here and then everything else just goes in order. So you're going to go olive oil, salt, chili paste, pepper, soy sauce, ginger, sesame oil, cilantro, Looks like a lot of scallions, but it's not because our fish isn't all in there yet. And then basil. And the thing with sushi is that it gets a little bit better over time. You don't want it to cook, uh, cook, it's cook I'm calling it cooking. When Once everything in there, it's kind of cooks a little bit, it gets better with time. So after about two hours, it's gonna be better, but not overnight. You don't want it to be like tomorrow morning. This sushi has an Asian flair, and it is a hit every time when I cater parties. Mm -hmm. So when you serve this up, you're just gonna put as much fish as your pita chip can hold. Put it on your platter. Make sure it's nice and cold and you're good to go. This looks good. And if we were doing this at home, like you said, this would go in the refrigerator for an hour or two? I, one hour's good, three hours is even better, but don't go overnight. Well, I'm gonna take 15 okay. seconds right now. <laughs> Perfect. Hmm. You can just taste all the ingredients. This is really good. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome. Thank you, Dan. Thanks a lot for helping us out. Absolutely. Remember, it's Eat Street, Anaheim, California. Kate, great job. Thank you. Cheers. Let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Bluefin tuna are seasonal visitors to the California and northern Mexican waters. Preferring water temperatures from 74 to 80 degrees, 95 to 100 degrees, or 62 to 68 degrees. That's right, 62 to 68 degrees. How long have you been working on it? Probably a good five, ten minutes now. <laughs> oh, Try a little longer than that. <laughs> Come on, I don't know. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Let me get down, guys. I just hooked it, you know, no big deal. 
Six fish going right now. It's getting toward the end of the day. We're on a day and a half trip, so that means we fish till dark. We still got about over an hour to go, and we just got another rebite. And this bite, if it, Skipper thinks toward the end of the day we're gonna have a really good bite. So if that happens, probably gonna get limits. Everyone's, you know, pretty close to limits right now. Probably one or two fish around away from limits. So if we can get another 18 more fish. 20 more fish, probably have limits for everybody. So it's the same thing, fishing uh, 30 pound test line with uh, 30 pound uh, fluorocarbon on there. And I'm pretty sure I have a circle hook on this time. So I'm just lifting up, winding down. When the fish wants to swim towards the boat, you wanna get as much line as you can. And you'll notice from time to time, you'll see the rods just bent straight up and down. The guys are fighting the fish. That's when the fish has its most power and control. When the fish starts to get tired, you'll notice that the line's gonna go up toward the surface. And as the line goes up to the surface, the fish is doing that because it's a lot easier for them to swim up that way. And it's easier to, uh, for them to fight against you. So when the fish does that, you know you're beating them up. Here he comes. Try not to take out the window. Yeah. Boy, that's gonna be minus one. <laughs> Go left. Pool is minus one of its members. <laughs> There's another bluefin tuna. I only need one more for my limit. Beautiful fish fishing on board the clips today. And one thing I want to tell you about this fish, this is one of those fish, a bluefin. When you have your bait, bait soaked out there for a long time like we're doing today, and you're getting ready to change your bait, don't wind it in really quick. Take your time, wind it back slow. That's what I did on this fish. I was winding it back slow, not too fast. <laughs> and I got hit really hard, and I threw it in free spool, and the fish came and swallowed it, and that's how I got this fish. You just can't give up on them. And you're using a circle hook, and that's where that hook's right there in the corner of the jaw, which is perfect. That's where you want to hook them, just like that. These fish have a lot of teeth, so getting them in the corner of the jaw really helps a lot. Nice guy, man, thanks. All right, we're gonna take a little break from the action here aboard the Eclipse, which we're having a great time aboard. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. This week's tip of the week, Mark and I will be doing it. Mark's a skipper of the Eclipse. And Mark, what would you tell our viewers this week's tip was for all these fish we caught today? I would say that if you're gonna come out and fish bluefin tuna, you gotta have fluorocarbon. It's an absolute must to have. 
Um, and I would always start off fishing a 40 or 50 pound outfit and then dropping down to a 30 or 25. Fish a lot of times attack a boat first and, and eat the chum right away and then they'll back off and then they might rebite really good, but it's really difficult to, um, to try to scale back up the line. Very easy to scale down and to scale back up. So I'd always start out with 40 pound fluorocarbon, whether I'm fishing sea bass at Catalina or if I'm fishing uh, bluefin tuna here on the Eclipse. And when you're out here on the Eclipse like this out in the open water, these bluefin, they haven't seen pressure before, so they're more likely to bite that 40, 50 pound, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of times people want to put a weight on, which has, this uh, trip worked pretty well. The the um, torpedo sinker on a on a rubber band worked very well. But a lot of times the skipper says the fish are 60 or 100 feet down, that's the length of the boat. And if, you know, you really wanted something to eat or drink and it was on the stern of the boat and we're up here on the bow, we would probably walk back to get it. So same thing with a fish. So. Don't feel pressure that you have to fish with a heavy weight to get to, to get a fish to bite. That's a good tip. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Well, we had a great time fishing today with the clips. We always do. Mark's a great skipper. We've been with him for many years out here. I've known him for a long time since he was a kid, and I knew his family in Montebello. So it's fun to fish with a guy like this, someone you grew up with, and he's one of the leaders in the industry doing a great job. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, hoping you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. Thanks, man. Thanks.